Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Your Mark on the World show. I'm your host, Devin Thorpe, and today our guest is uh, a fellow with a remarkable story to tell, Leon Logothetis, who has traveled around the world on his motorcycle relying solely on the kindness of strangers. Leon, welcome to the show. We're so glad to have you. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, You've written a book about your story, and of course, I hope everyone will go buy the book, The Kindness Diaries. Uh, but, but tell us a little bit about, just give us a little bit of background on this story. Sure. Well, I used to be a broker in the city of London, and I found myself disconnected. I found myself uninspired, you know, really not living my full potential. And I watched the movie The Motorcycle Diaries which is about Che Guevara traveling around South America on a vintage motorbike, relying on kindness. And I had an epiphany, and I decided that I had to quit my job uh, and go and travel the world. And that's basically what I did, thankfully. So when did you leave? Uh, the year. Yeah. I left uh, in about 2006. Okay, and when did you get back? I I haven't gone back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. So so you began this the, the travel in two thousand six. Uh, where were you when you started, and and where did you sort of how did you launch this trip? Sure. I mean, prior to the motorcycle trip, I had multiple journeys. Um, one of them being I, I I walked from Times Square to the Hollywood sign on kindness. And I'd done a lot of these journeys where I was receiving kindness. And I realized that kindness is not a one-way street, it's a two-way street. So it's about receiving and giving kindness. So that's when I came up with the idea for the motorbike journey. Um, and the twist in the journey was it wasn't just about relying on kindness, it was also about giving unsuspecting Good Samaritans uh, a life-changing gift. And so what did you do to help the Good Samaritans. Well, my favorite story is, is, is from a chap called um, Tony. He was a, a homeless chap who I met in Pittsburgh. Uh, I had nowhere to stay. I'd asked a lot of people, and, and you know, I had no expectations. If they didn't want to help, that's fine. Um, and I asked Tony. I didn't know he was homeless. And I said, can I stay with you? And he said, well, unfortunately, I'm, I'm homeless. So I have a house. But you can come and stay with me if you want. You can, you can, I'll protect you. I'll feed you. I'll help you. And I was just in, in shock. I was in awe of this man. He, he had nothing, and yet he gave me everything that he had. And he taught me that true wealth is not in our wallets, but it's in our hearts. So the next morning, I, I felt this uh, passion to, to help him, um, to allow him to live his dream. So I, I was fortunate enough to offer him an apartment and to send him back to school. Um, so now he's learning how to become a chef, and uh, he's, he's not homeless anymore. And to me, that's very powerful, not, not, not just because of the gift. It's powerful because he really changed my life. Like A man with nothing gives me everything. And that opened up my heart. Um, and I was just really proud that I could help him in some way. Well, it, it is just a, an inspiring story to think about Tony sharing uh, from his, his, really his want uh, with you. So that's just a, a great story. So... <clears throat> when you started your journey, you, you headed out, uh, how would you fuel the bike? How would you find places to stay? How would you navigate around the world? Well, basically, I had no money, no food, uh, no place to stay, and no gas. And importantly, I couldn't accept money. So it was always generosity that fueled the journey. Um, and... For example, the first stop for me was Hollywood. I, I took my little gas canister and I walked around the streets of Hollywood trying to get some gas. And a lot of people were saying, oh, here's a couple of dollars. I'm like, I can't accept money. It, ha it has to be an act of kindness. So I finally found someone who was willing to fill the gas canister up. And he was the person that lit the fuse for the journey to begin. And that's really how it happened. I would go up to people. I would ask them for help. And more often than not, they wouldn't help, and that's okay. But you find that one angel that wants to help you, um, and you connect with them. And then 
the rest is is the, the rest is uh, just just kind of just magically happens. So, tell me a little bit about the bicycle, or excuse me, the motorcycle you were on. This wasn't uh, a big uh, brand new Harley. What was it you were riding? <laughs> It was not a, br a brand new Harley, that's for sure. It was actually a Chang Jang, and it was uh, born in 1978 in China, um, and it was brought over here, and um, I purchased it in Las Vegas. I remember very clearly, I went down to Vegas to, to buy it, and I drove it all the way to LA, and it broke in Pasadena. So here I am about to travel around the world on a vintage yellow bike with no money, and it breaks in Pasadena. So. It had its um, issues, let's say. Sometimes it wouldn't start. Sometimes it would start and then on the road stop. Um, it had a sidecar. And the sidecar was really because you never knew who would need a helping hand. Because I knew that people would be receiving something, but they didn't. So it was kind of like a little play on words. Um, and it was yellow. And I chose yellow for two reasons. First of all, because yellow is... This, the color of happiness, um, and secondly, because I knew that a bright yellow vintage bike with a sidecar would um, be an icebreaker, so I could talk to people easier. So how did you get the bike fixed in Pasadena and every other time that it broke down? In Pasadena, I hadn't started the journey yet, so I called up on my mobile phone and paid $400 to get it towed to L.A., um, all the other times, people would help me. And, and I, another reason why I purchased the bike, because it was very easy to fix. There were no ele electricals, there were no things like that. So anyone, anyone who knew anything about bikes could easily fix the bike. Now, what did you know about bikes? Well, that's a good question. I actually purchased the book, The Art of Motorcycle Maintenance, but I didn't read it, which was very <laughs> foolish. And um, I don't know much about uh, fixing bikes. I know a little bit, but not enough to fix when some serious problems happened. So did you have some serious problems along the way? I certainly did. In India, I had a serious problem. The bike just wouldn't start. I had no idea what was wrong with it. I ended up meeting some random man on the street. He took me to a mechanic, and the mechanics fixed it. But I must say that uh, that story in India, a lot of people liked the bike because um, there was a famous Bollywood movie made in India, and I didn't know this, with a bike that was yellow with a sidecar. So, you know, I, I became a pseudo-celebrity only because my bike was yellow, and I didn't realize that. And they were really helpful additionally because of that. Well, that's a fun, fun coincidence, a fun coincidence. Yeah. Well, as you look back on this experience, what was the, the real takeaway message? I'd say the real takeaway message is, for example, if we turn CNN on, we turn Fox News on, there's so much negativity. We are being bombarded with negativity. And if I were to watch CNN for 24 hours, I, I wouldn't feel safe to leave the house. Yet, there's so much positivity out there in the world. There's so much goodness. There's so much potential when it comes to human connection, which I find to be a really healing power. Yet we don't really see it and if you go out of your comfort zone and you travel the world and, and you meet people even you don't even have to travel the world just go, go out into your community more often than not people are good there is an ocean of kindness the, the, it's, it's just a wonderful thing and it was a really really powerful reminder to me that it's not all bad yes bad things happen but it's not all bad. Well, uh, before you go, I want to ask you some other questions. Uh, first, Leon, uh, who do you admire most? Who, who do you look to as a role model? Winston Churchill. And I say Winston Churchill not just because I'm English. I say Winston Churchill because Winston Churchill you know, lived a full life. And, and, and Winston Churchill was in a situation in the beginning of the Second World War where all the odds were against him. Um, all the odds were against the British people and all the odds were against all of us. And he stood up to tyranny and um, he inspired a nation. 
And by inspiring a nation, he inspired a world. And uh, I think that's very important, the, the power to inspire, the power to get people to, to, to really fully understand how much they have to offer. And uh, I, that's why I named my dog after good old Winston Churchill. Yeah, oh, that's great. Now, as you think about <clears throat> the things that you've accomplished in your life, the impact you're having, uh, clearly you've given some thought to this, but tell, tell the people who are watching how they can have more impact. I think the one thing that unifies our audience is a desire to do more good. How do people have more impact, more good, do more good in the world? I think that the answer to that is, first of all, you have to be doing what you are passionate about. You have to be following your dreams. Once you are doing what you are passionate about, once you are following your dreams, you then have the capacity to inspire other people to do the same thing. And there are so many people out there that due to circumstances maybe beyond their control or certain people that circumstances that are in their control that are sitting in their comfort zone and are not really living fully. And I would say try your best, even if it's a small step, to get out of your comfort zone. And that small step will become a giant leap. And that giant leap will, will hopefully inspire people to do the same thing. Um, I, I think that's where it starts. I think that's where it starts. That's, that's, that's great, great insight. Now, why do you care about kindness? Why do you care about making the world a better place? Why, you know, now that you've done all of this, how do you, how do you feel about this? The reason why I care is very personal, and that is that as a kid, I felt the, a lack of kindness. I felt a lack of empowerment. I felt disempowered, and I made a promise to myself that I would go down a different route. I would go down the route of trying to empower people, trying to, to be kind and to connect. Yet I'm human, I'm not perfect, none of us are, and I can't do it all the time. Um, and I, I just, I try my best, and, and sometimes, like I said, it's simple things. Like, for example, you can go to Starbucks and smile at the barista. These little things, the little steps that, that make your life a little better and make their life a little better. And I think it's so important. Another thing is the concept of being seen. That's kindness. Like I see you and you see me. I hear you and you hear me. And that's maybe another way of, of, of feeling loved. But I think that's so important. And there are many, many people out there that feel unseen. Many people. And uh, the more people that feel seen, the kinder the world will be. That's my theory. I think it's a beautiful theory. Now, before you go, Leon, I wonder if you would just uh, take a minute to tell people where they can find your book and how they can uh, connect with you. Sure. They, they can find the book, which is called The Kindness Diaries, on Amazon or in any bookshops. They can connect with me at Twitter, which I believe is... There, <laughs> um, and they can go to my site, which is a little bit challenging, but it's basically actually it's not challenging. It's my name dot com, so Leon Logothetis dot com, um, and I'd I'd love to connect with people. That's what it's really all about, connection. Well, fantastic, and, and in addition to the book, you are also uh, a speaker. You you, you uh, are available to speak at events, right? I am. I am indeed. Um, really, my journey started when I when I was 15, and I heard this lady speaking about the, the her son's powerful life. So, speaking is a really important part of of my mission. Oh, fantastic! Well, Leon, again, we thank you very much for being with us today, and wish you every success in your continued work. Thank you so much. All righty, let's do some good.